So as I promised, I gave you the introduction. Now we'll be starting off with the next topic that is the physical quantities. What well, basically do the physical quantities actually imply? Yeah? Okay. So broadly speaking, what I can do, I can I can classify the physical quantities into two basic parts. That is one is known as qualitative observation, other one is quantitative. You, you do see many things, right? But you may not have the apparatus, you do not have the technique to measure or to quantify any particular thing. In that case, we do a quality analysis. For example, let's say the extent of the sky. When, when basically the, the observations were started, in that case, it was not known as to how much is going to be the extent. Does it ex really extend up to infinity or there is a particular limit to it? That is what we classify as a qualitative observation. Okay? Now, if I have any particular thing, for instance, let's say I want to know that how much height I am flying at. In that case, that, that implies a kind of a quantitative observation. Since we are into something in the realistic space, so we will be more focused about the quantitative observations rather than the qualitative observations. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. Now, if we go further, we have to go further and now if we try to understand as to what basically is a physical quantity. Now let me, we have been talking about it for quite some long time. Let me now name it, let me now define it for you. So what does physical quantity imply? So a physical quantity, I know my handwriting is awfully bad, but I'll still try to be legible enough. So a physical quantity is the one that can be measured and it consists of a magnitude and how we define a particular physical quantity. Now, as I have mentioned, there are multiple types of physical quantities. There, there is something known as distance, there is something known as speed, and so on. So, some of the physical quantities are the base quantities, are the primary quantities, and the other ones are the derived or the secondary quantities. Right? So, let's now try to understand what basically is a secondary quantity and what is a primary quantity. Okay. So, to understand what basically is a primary quantity and what basically is a secondary quantity, let me just tell you, let me just give you some examples. Let's say 70 kilometers per hour, 4.5 meters. Now, what is the difference? What is the difference that you see? Here, this is 4.5 meters, right? So, this does not depend on the time. Irrespective of, irrespective of which time interval you measure, if you are measuring the length of something, the rod let's say, so the length of the rod is going to remain as 4.5 meters irrespective of what is the time unit that you are specifying. But if you are looking at here, so this value is going to change. If you change kilometers to meters, similarly if you change hours to seconds or hours to minutes, right? So, this is a derived quantity. This depends on both the length as well as the time. So, it's dependent on both the length and time. This is not a derived quantity. This is a primary quantity. Right? So, this is how we define it further. So, going by that logic, if I have to understand what basically is the system of unit that we are using, so to understand the basic system of unit that we are using, we say that our systems can be classified into broadly three types. One is SI or 
M K S system. The other one is C G S, and the third one is F P S. Okay. So what is the difference? What is the difference? We'll be generally using this particular system. This system is S I. What does the S I stand for? S stands for the standard. I is the international. So this is the commonly used system of unit across everywhere. All the countries generally specify it in this. But why do we need this? We need these systems of units for the simple reason. Let's say you try to buy a cloth from a shopkeeper. The shopkeeper is, tells you that this is three. This is three. He doesn't specify which system. Or let's say three centimeters. But you do not have a centimeter scale. Instead, you have meter scale. Then what you do? So let's say not even three centimeters. It's a three hundred centimeters. But you do not have a centimeter scale. Then what you do? There should be some system which should be able to convert from one system of measurement to the other system of measurement. So there has to be something linking between the different system of units. Therefore, we specify the different system. We classify the different systems where you measure it. And then obviously there is an interrelation between them. So SI system or the MTA system, why do I say or? Because both measure the mass in kilograms. Then uh, both measure the distance in meters. Both measure the time in seconds. Okay. So meter, kilogram, second. Coming here, the CGS system you can explain it. On your own, this is centimeter gram second. You measure the distance in centimeters, measure the mass in grams, and time in seconds. FPS foot pound second. So time is uh, sorry. You have the mass measured in foot. You have the force measured, or you have the weight measured in pounds, and you have the time measured in seconds. So these are the three system of units that we have, right? Now let's go further. We'll be, unless specified otherwise, we'll be discussing in SI system of units only. Okay? So if I say that SI system of units is our conventional choice, in that case, what does that mean basically? It means that we'll be measuring all the things in only one system of unit. Please understand it very clearly that we'll be measuring in only one system. You should not get confused in measuring time in hours, distance in kilometers, or so on. So please be very, very clear. Now, let me classify this further, what we have already discussed, that there is a base quantity, and there is a Derived quantity. So there are two things. For instance, let me give you an example. Let's say you are building a wall for your home or somewhere. So for building a wall, you need bricks. So the bricks are the base quantities using which you build up the wall. And final product, that is the wall that is produced, is your derived unit. So der derivation that occurs, derivation of the wall that you get is as a result of using the bricks. If you did not have the bricks, obviously there is not going to be any wall that is going to be produced. Am I clear? Any doubts? Anything? Please tell you to let me know. Okay. Now, when we are talking about the SI system of units, so what basically does the SI system of unit actually stand for? How do we measure it? Because since we are saying that it's a fundamental system, every country uses it. So obviously there has to be something that will tell us that this is how, this is our standard of measuring the meter. This is what is our standard of measuring the weight. This is our standard of measuring the second. Anything apart from that is not going to be considered as that particular system. Right? So we'll classify on that, we'll discuss on that in our next topic. Hopefully till this particular point, it is complete.